G'day YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Mmm. Must be a mad scientist moving in the offing. From what I can see. Let's have a little bit of basic thumb nuttery, shall we? Beginning with the wood. Pre-manufactured machine joined picture frames. Mass produced in China, shipped out to Australia and my local hometown has a company called Photo Create and they've uh, they've moved to a different style of extruded molded picture frame which has the join at 90 degrees to the direction of the stuff that they used to use so they throw away odd lengths like this which basically gets used as fire lighters by employees or it gets carted to the dump here we see a helical and straight thumb nut both in ladies size both made from the new style of extruded Chinese radiator pine picture frame offcut whereas by comparison the older style of machine joinery definitely produced a more decorative effect so I'm sure it's slightly more efficient price wise but I regret the coming of the new wood I don't think it's quite as charming as having the joins running the other way but anyway pretty much any discarded off cuts of wood can be used for manufacturing thumb nuts because they're only 8 or 10 centimeters long depending on whether they're men's all ladies sized. Here we see the difference in the sawn drilled blank for a straight thumb nut versus that for a helically twisted thumb nut. Not a great difference, but there is a difference. Obviously, the first step is to do the working drawings on the wood. Drawings for four, about 15 minutes, so three and a half minutes drawing time per thumb nut. After doing the drawing, first order of business is to remove that rounded molded flared edge by judicious use of the appropriate rasp which makes short work of an almost butter soft piece of wood as you can see If you don't take the time to remove that flange, then you won't be able to get the piece of timber to sit flat and square when you clamp it onto the end of the bench when you're ready to bore the hole. Using a suitably archaic piece of equipment,
and because the drill's really old and not perfectly sharp it's not going to cut a perfectly neat hole so therefore I'm using a drill that's smaller than the hole I want to finish up with and I'll just have to enlarge it with a rat tail file later on but it works pretty well as you can see it bites chunks out of the fibers and it doesn't leave particularly neat holes so we rely on rat tail file to smooth things out Uh, that's not too bad for a first rough go and there we see another feature the face front and back of the wood gets knocked around by the ancient technology so therefore it's going to be sacrificed and that's why you can't get two out of each blank if it wasn't for the damage done on entry and exit you'd be able to jigsaw along the pencil line and then split the blank with a hacksaw but as I said that's not going to happen there is no compelling reason to do so but I generally like to take the worst of the torn fibre edges off before I do any jigsawing. And that has to be done top and bottom. punch some divots on exit, doesn't it? The essence of the wood curve carver's art is to start oversize and cut away anything that looks wrong. All you have to do is know when to stop. And now, by the magic of modern miracle technology, using the power of the sun stored in the pyramid, and the jigsaw that I bought when my wife was pregnant with my almost 25 year old son I will endeavour to cut along the pencil line and to do enough cutting for two blanks in one sitting which will then give the system at least 24 hours to recover before I ask it to run the jigsaw and cut another set out.
There we go. Two new blanks. Two more marked out, ready to go tomorrow. Two more short pieces to join the rest in the pile of offcuts and the occasional failure. The crude in the process of learning how to build thumb nuts. So now it's a case of mount it in the vise. Do just a little bit of work. Making sure that the outside edge is actually square. Compared to the center line. basically preparing to do more working drawings on the wood and we want a smooth surface. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Put it there where you can see it. Now, before working on the outside, we have to get the central hole's got to fit my little finger through it. And at the moment, it doesn't. It's also pretty rough. We're looking for a 15 millimetre diameter throat to the hole. I don't know how old the rasps are, but I'm prepared to bet the G-clamps are 100 years old. Relics of my grandfather's coach building and wheel riding workshop. When she bought from a bloke called Draffin in 1919. G 
jack graphen, I think. Yeah, that's getting close. Now, as I said, I was preparing the wood for drawings on the wood to show me where to go when starting to rasp wood off the blank. And of course, it has to be done on both sides. Right, so now that's done. Maybe not perfectly, but it is done on both sides. So, <clears throat> I can start coming down to meet the line on the blade tips. Just work my way around the corners. supposed to sit there. So the next trick is to remove the unwanted material from the hub, which I do this way. Make sense?
bit of a chip out of that blade edge, but I think I'll be able to compensate. So, now all I need to do is some more working drawings on the wood and then carve away everything that looks wrong. But to be honest, the movie's already 22 and a half minutes long. It's almost news time and I've only got one and a half minutes left on the memory chip. So, warbles on a lot to YouTube. We'll have to have another thumb nuttery movie later on at another date. Ciao.